Hi, my name is Ella and I'm the Plants Meow and welcome to my grow tent. So today I'm going to be talking about DIY humidifiers, specifically why I created one, how to create one, and is it really worth it? So the first thing I want to talk about is what led me to this. Now, in this basement grow tent, the humidity stays around 44% to 55% humidity, and it doesn't really ever get higher than that. I have one Elect Homes humidifier running, and I have a heater humidifier combination that I have running in order to bring the heat up in here. Now, there's various reasons why my humidity is lower down here, and that has to do with things like my exhaust fan, my actual heater, the amount of space I have in here. There's various reasons why the humidity is lower, but one thing remains certain is that the regular humidifiers available for purchase, which really usually cap at six liters, don't do the job. Now in my plant room, I've tried larger evaporative humidifiers. The one I was using just ended up not panning out because eventually at some point it just stopped working right and I'm not really quite sure why. So it was just too much headache, too much hassle, and too many reasons why I was just done with these regular small humidifiers. Now, if I wanted to keep using them, things I could have done were buy more of them. That certainly would have had the cost go up, and I wasn't sure if I was willing to keep doing that because not only would the cost go up, but more of my floor space in this plant shop would be taken up, which I'm not keen on at all. To me, this felt like an essential thing to do, and I was really, really excited to do it and I'm glad it finally worked out. Now the products I'm using today are from the House of Hydro and really the DIY humidifier is based off of their design. And the reason that is, is because they sell the parts in order to make this DIY humidifier. And that's because they specialize in ultrasonic mist makers. Now ultrasonic mist makers, you'll <laughs> usually see them for things like Halloween. That's how people get those large effects of fog. And essentially we can use that same practice in order to give our plants more humidity. I chose House of Hydro because their products are some of the best rated stuff on the market and they come with a really good warranty. So I would highly recommend them if you're considering getting an ultrasonic mist maker. Now to make this product, they recommend getting a 27 gallon tub. When I went to the hardware store, there was only one tub that fit that size. Certainly if I was going to make something for my plant room, I would pick something more aesthetically pleasing. But since this is something that's just going to be outside of my grow tent and I really don't care what it looks like, I decided to settle on this <laughs> gaudy black tub with this yellow lid and I was completely fine with that because I don't really care as long as these plants get the humidity that they need. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how to make this humidifier and then we're going to have it run, see how well it works, and see if it's really worth it. First I want to go over some of the products that I'm going to be using in this video to build this humidifier. So first, if you notice on the House of Hydro website, they have a ton of ultrasonic mist makers for various sizes for the grow space that you need. These vary in price, so I would look at your grow space, see the size that's appropriate for you, and buy one that is comparable to that. For my grow tent, I'm picking the six disc mist maker, and that's because they recommend this one for tents that are eight foot by eight foot or under. So if you look down, it actually gives you a list of things you would need for a DIY humidifier. The first thing would be the waterproof fan kit. So this is great because you absolutely need a fan for this purpose because you need something that is able to push the mist out of the unit. I will be purchasing their largest fan because the mist maker I'm getting is already a pretty big one and you really want the best fan you can get in order to push the mist out. That way it doesn't get backed up into the fan and so it pushes out enough mist. So the next thing I'm gonna get is the humidistat. Now this is optional. If you don't care about what your humidity setting is, then it's not necessary. But for me, it's important to be able to set it at a certain humidity because I don't want it running constantly and I want it to be able to shut off whenever it reaches my desired humidity levels. So another item that is completely optional is this UV reservoir sterilizer. I'm adding this to my unit just so I don't have to do cleanings as often. This will help prevent any kind of algae buildup that might occur. So anything that helps me clean this unit in between larger cleanings sounds awesome to me. <laughs> And really quickly, I just wanted to show you this autofill mini float valve. This is something you can use if you choose to have your humidifier automatically refilled. I don't have anything to set this up at the moment, so I'm not going to purchase it, but in the future, I will be definitely coming back for this product. 
So my total cost on the House of Hydra website comes to $334.95. So the first thing I'm going to do is put holes into my 27 gallon tub. So I'm going to be using a hole saw and you want to make sure that you're drilling in reverse so that your holes are smoother. My first hole is going to be for the fan, which is going to be 4.5 inches. And my second hole is actually going to be larger. It's going to be six inches. And this is where the mist is going to come out of. You want the area where the mist is going to come out of to be larger or have two ports where mist comes out of because you don't want mist to come back through the fan. For my third hole, I'm going to be drilling a little access point for my cables. That way I can feed them through without having them come through the other ports. So now we have our equipment here in person. First, there's the ultrasonic mist maker that we're using, sitting in its floating device. Then there's our waterproof fan, the 120 millimeter size. Then we have our humidistat with a sensor. Additionally, I'm going to be putting this like, little extender on top of it and I'm going to be plugging the fan and the ultrasonic mist maker into the unit. That way they can both turn off at the same time when it reaches its desired humidity levels. Then we've got our UV sterilizer. Then we have our ducting, which we're going to be connecting the unit to the grow tent in order to feed the mist into it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed the UV sterilizer into the port where we're going to put the cables. I'm doing this first before putting the mist maker in because it fills up quite a bit of the hole and I want to make sure I'm able to fit it before I start throwing all these cables inside. So they give you these little plugs to put on the side of your unit, but honestly it wasn't sticking to mine so I ended up just laying it inside, which on the website they say is perfectly fine. Then I add the mist maker into the tub and I pull through the cables. After that, I'm going to be adding my ducting into the 6 inch hole. I feed enough in there that I feel comfortable. So then I'm going to add silicone caulk around the edges of the fan. That way I can stick it to the unit without it moving and seal it a little better. Also if you notice, I did tape down the cables, that way no mist escapes. Next, I'm going to be caulking around the ducting. That way, when mist is being pushed out, that any areas where it could escape are sealed. If you look inside, you'll notice that there's our UV light and our ultrasonic mist maker is just floating there. And as you can see, the ducting is fed all the way into the grow tent. So now I'm just plugging in the system and as you'll notice it's at 58% currently and that's because I had a different humidifier running before this. And there's the fan running. So at the moment the mist is being pushed into the tent already. And I'm keeping this in real time so if you see right now it's at 65%. So 66. <laughs> so it's already increased by 8% and it's been less than 30 seconds. So if you notice here, this is where the mist is filtered into the tent. And currently it is at 77%, which is insane. Which means it took less than two minutes to get this unit up 20%.
Now some tips I want to offer you is one, don't fill this container too high. The ultrasonic mist maker sits on a floating device. So because of that, there's going to be some splashback once it's activated. So you really want to leave a bit of a gap in your container and not fill it all the way up, or you're going to have water leaking through the edges of where your lid sits. Next, I encourage you to put your ultrasonic mist maker on a timer. So what I did is actually I hooked up my ultrasonic mist maker and my fan to my humidistat and I hooked up that humidistat to a timer and that timer is set to go five hours on one hour off. Now I believe they recommend eight hours on and one hour off and the reason that I chose to do it the numbers that I did is because I was still worried about the battery getting overheated and so if I have it on six hour intervals what ends up happening it's at the same time day or night that it turns off and on so I know exactly the reason for those drops. So now I want to weigh the pros and the cons of this humidifier. So one you don't have to refill as often and there's actually a possibility of adding a water valve for automatic refills if you chose to do so at a later time. Which, come on, who wouldn't love a humidifier that automatically refilled itself? At the moment, the setup that I have in my basement, I don't have a way to get a water line to it, but it's definitely something that I'm gonna be considering doing in the future. Three, I don't have to clean a ton of humidifiers. It's really just gonna be the one large unit, which I think that's really great because honestly, having a bunch of teeny humidifiers gets really tedious after a while. Four, it's strong enough guys, strong enough to reach my desired humidity, which honestly is everything, is the only reason <laughs> that I really, really, really love this humidifier. I mean, there's a ton of reasons I love it, but this is the winning one for me. Having it reach the desired humidity and it being able to set it and knowing it'll get there is just so comforting and it feels so good. Also for me, it doesn't take up any floor space. Now, if you're gonna be putting this in your plant room or something like that, it's obviously gonna take up floor space, but in a situation like mine where you just have a grow tent and you can put it on the outside, you're not sacrificing any growing room in the tent, which is really important for me. Also, it's completely customizable. If I wanted to get a prettier container or a different port for having my mist come out, such as a duct that I could spray paint a different color instead of having the ducting system that I have now, if you don't need to feed the ducting system into a tent and you just have it sitting in a room, there's plenty of options that you can do. You can put an air duct plate on top of your humidifier and then have something spouting humidity out or just literally just use the hole that's there if it doesn't bother you to not have humidity pointed in a certain direction. Now, of course, if I did this for my plant room, what I probably would end up doing is that instead of one large hole for the mist to come out. I'd probably have two smaller holes, probably the same size as the fan, and point those tubes in different directions in my plant room. That way the humidity can get around without any issue. So the main con of this unit is the total cost. Now yes it does get pricey, but for me there's so many pros to this that it felt like it was worth the price. And if you're going to be buying a ton of smaller humidifiers, this basically just adds up to one big one. And this is one that upkeeping that you're more in charge of. You kind of understand the inner workings of this humidifier. You know, the only thing you have is the ultrasonic mist maker that you really have to make sure stays working correctly. And you just got to check those little discs in there, make sure they're all good and all clean and replace them when you need to. And there's also a warranty on that product. So it's pretty much worth it for me. Also, if you don't have as large of a space or you don't care to have as much humidity being pumped out, you can get a smaller fan. You can also get a smaller ultrasonic mist maker. It's not necessary to get this larger one. The reason I got the size I did is because it's the one I needed for this particular tent. A size smaller would not have done it for me. In fact, I can see the benefits of going up a size, but I don't feel like that it's absolutely necessary at this time. So would I do this again? And I would say absolutely. For a larger grow space such as this tent, I feel like it is a must in order to reach my desired humidity levels without the headache of smaller humidifiers. I actually look forward to making a classier design of this product for my plant room and I can't wait to show you that. This was, has been definitely a good experience. I'm really glad I did this and I did learn a lot from it and I'm super, super happy with the end result. Like, oh, gosh. But if you're interested in the House of Hydro, I'll put the links to their website down below. But I wanna know your thoughts on this humidifier. Do you think it's personally worth it? Is this something that you would do yourself? Do you have any recommendations that you think you would change about it? It feels pretty simple to me, but there's always things that you could probably suggest to make something better. And I'm totally, 
totally open for suggestions, especially when I make my next one. So far, I have an idea of what I want to do for it. It's very similar to this. But if you have anything to add, I would love to hear it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next week.